Adding and subtracting fractions, finding a common denominator. We have added and subtracted with the same denominator, but now we are going to have to find a common denominator. Common denominator means that we need to have the same number on the bottom of both numbers that we're either adding or subtracting. To find a common denominator, we are going to ask what number both denominators can go into. You always want to check to see if the smaller denominator can go into the larger denominator first. That way you're only going to have to change one fraction instead of changing both fractions. An exa uh, some examples of this, we have 1 fourth plus 7 twelfths. Notice that I have a 4 and a 12 on the denominator, in the denominator. When I add, I have to have the same number in the denominator. I can get the same number by multiplying both the top and the bottom, or both the numerator and the denominator, by the same number. So if you look at the denominators, 4 and 12, remember first we're going to ask ourselves, can the smaller number, 4, go into the larger number, 12? Well, 4 does go into 12 perfectly, because 4 times 3 is 12. So to change 1 fourth to have a denominator of 12, I need to multiply both the bottom, or denominator, and the top by 3. I do not have to change 7 twelfths in this case, because um, I'm going to change 1 fourth to have a denominator of 12, so I don't need to change the denominator of 7 twelfths. Well, 1 times 3 is 3, and 4 times 3 is 12. So 1 fourth becomes 3 twelfths plus 7 twelfths. When you add fractions, remember you only add the numerators. Your denominator stays the same. So the denominator is going to stay 12, and 3 plus 7 is 10. So I have 10 twelfths. When we're dealing with fractions, we want to put our answer in simplest form. Notice that 10 and 12 are both even numbers, so we can divide both top and bottom by 2 to simplify it to 5 sixths. If you look at the next example, we have 2 fifths plus 5 sixths. We have a denominator of 5 and a denominator of 6. 5 does not fit into 6 perfectly. So we're going to have to change both fractions to get a common denominator. If you think about the multiples of 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and think about what number, which of those numbers 6 can go into. 6 cannot go into 5, 10, 15, 20, or 25, but 6 can go into 30. So 30 is going to be my common denominator. What do you do to 5? To get 30 is you multiply by 6. So we need to multiply both the top and the bottom of 2 fifths by 6 to get a denominator of 30. Now ask yourself what do you do to 6 to get a denominator to get 30? The answer would be multiply by 5. So now I have to multiply by 5 on top and bottom of 5 6. When you multiply, you get 12 fifths, uh, 12 over 30 plus 25 over 30. Remember, denominator stays the same. When you add your numerators, you get 37 over 30. This is an improper fraction because the larger number is on top. When we have an improper fraction, we need to change it to a mixed number. To do that, you divide 37 by 30. 30 goes into 37 one time, and you have 7 left over. So 1 becomes your whole number, and 7 was what was left over over 30. You cannot simplify 7 over 30, so this is your final answer. The next example is 3 fourths plus 1 sixth. Again, I always ask myself, can the smaller denominator 4 go into the larger denominator 6? The answer is no. So again, just like the last example, I'm going to have to change both uh, fractions to get a common denominator. If you think about the multiples of 4, we have 4, 8, 12, 
16, 20, and so on. If you think about those multiples and ask yourself if 6 can go into it also. So 6 cannot go into 4, 6 cannot go into 8, but 6 can go into 12. So 12 is going to be my least common denominator, or the smallest denominator. What do we do to 4 to get 12? And the answer would be multiply by 3. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. What do you do to 6 to get 12 is multiply by 2. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. When you do 3 times 3, you get 9 over 12, plus 1 times 2 is 2 over 6 times 2 is 12. Now that we have a common denominator, I can leave the denominator alone and add your numerators. So 9 plus 2 is 11, and your denominator is 12. This cannot be simplified or changed into a mixed number. So 11 twelfths is our final answer. When we have a mixed number, we can change them to improper fractions. If you remember how to do this, we're looking at the fraction 6 and 5 ninths. To change a mixed number to an improper fraction, we multiply the whole number times the denominator. So in this case, it would be 6 times 9, which equals 54. And then you're going to add the numerator. So 6 times 9 gave us 54. We need to add 54 plus 5, which gives us 59. To write this as an improper fraction, you put 59 over the original, original denominator. It does not change, so it's 59 over 9. The next three examples, we have mixed numbers. When we're adding or subtracting mixed numbers, we, one method is to change them all to improper fractions. We talked about another method of grouping um, the other day, but this today we're going to practice changing them to improper fractions. Notice we have 8 and 2 thirds minus 5 and 5 sixths for the first example. Before we subtract or find a common denominator, we're going to go ahead and change these both to improper fractions. To change 8 and 2 thirds to an improper fraction, we do 3 times 8 plus 2. 3 times 8 is 24, plus 2 is 26. Remember, denominator stays the same, so we have 26 over 3. And to change 5 and 5 sixths to, uh, to an improper fraction, you do 6 times 5 is 30, plus 5 is 35. Now if you notice we do not have a common denominator, ask yourself if your smaller denominator can go into your larger denominator. Can 3 go into 6? The answer is yes. I need to multiply both two, uh, 26 and 3 by 2. And when I do that, I get 52 over 6 minus 35 over 6. When you do 32, or I'm sorry, 52 minus 35, you get 17 over 6. That is an improper fraction, so we need to divide. 17 divided by 6, and 6 can fit into 17 two whole times with 5 left over. So I, my final answer is 2 and 5 sixths. Again, on the next example, I'm going to change these two improper fractions. To do that, I do 6 times 3, which is 18, plus 5, which is 23. Keep your denominator the same, which is 6 plus 4 times 2 is not uh, 8, plus 1 is 9, over 4. Ask yourself if your smaller denominator can go into your larger denominator. 4 cannot go into 6, but if you think about the multiples of 6, we have 6 and then 12. 4 can go into 12, so we're going to change both of these fractions to have a denominator of 12. To change 23 over 6 to have a denominator of 12, we have to multiply by 2, and we get 46 over 12. To change 9 fourths to have a common denominator of 12, we have to multiply by 3, which gives us, on both top and bottom, which gives us 27 over 12. When we add these together, we get 73 over 12. Again, we have an improper fraction. We have to go ahead and divide, and when we work this out, we get 6 and 1 twelfth. The last example, we have 5 and 7 ninths minus 4 and 2 thirds. Change these both 
two improper fractions, and you get 52 over 9 minus 14 over 3. Ask yourself if your smaller denominator can go into your larger denominator. Can 3 go into, 12, uh, into 9? 3 can go into 9, so I just need to change 3, the uh, fraction 14 over 3, to have a denominator of 9, which I need to multiply both top and bottom by 3. When I do that, I get 52 over 9 minus 42 over 9. 52 minus 42 is 10 over 9. This is an improper fraction. I need to change it to a mixed number. 9 goes into 10 one whole time with 1 left over. So it's 1 and 1 ninth. Today's assignment is page 36, numbers 2 through 28 even.